Welcome to A Healthy Curiosity, the podcast that explores what it takes to be well in a busy world with self-care strategies from Chinese medicine. I'm your host, Brody Welch, here to support you on your journey of health, happiness, and personal evolution. Welcome to A Healthy Curiosity. I'm your host, Brody Welch. And as you probably know, if you've listened to this show, one of the things that I love most right now is helping people really step into the people they are becoming next by aligning their good intentions with their actions, specifically helping people change their daily habits, the daily essential habits of self-care, like meditation and eating nourishing food and getting enough sleep and having enough time for what's really important to us, our, our love loved ones, our creativity, our joy, our intuition, our our ability to serve in the world. The more of that, of those habits that we can bring onto autopilot, the more energy we have for the rest of our lives. So in in developing my coaching and being able to, to help people, I've spent considerable time researching the, the science of how we form habits, what it takes to change them. And that's why I'm thrilled to be talking to my guest today. Manish Sethi is the founder of Pavlock, which is a wearable device that uses electric shock to help break bad habits. I have to confess to stalking this technology for over a year online before finally taking the plunge and purchasing one. And I have loved having a Pavlock. I have, I've used it for a couple different things, and I think that it, that it really helps. I am by no means a, an affiliate or getting any money off of saying that, um, but but it's it's just kind of you know part of a cool uh, a, a cool approach to to harnessing our um our the full aspect of who we are as mammals and what we know about biology in order to evolve. So part of Manisha's story is that he dealt with attention and focus issues and decided to invent a technology to help him control and break the bad habit or back. Uh, Pavlok has achieved quite a lot of fame. He's been on the Colbert Report and late night with Jimmy Fallon and Good Morning America, all sorts of cool places. Um, he uh, basically, it, and and he's he's interested in 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 helping people change their lives for the better. So Manish, welcome to A Healthy Curiosity. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for inviting me. I'd love to hear more about the motivation behind creating Pavlok. Would you be willing to share a little of your story? Sure, I'd love to. Um, so I was diagnosed ADHD and always had trouble focusing ever since I was a kid. Um, my teachers would always say, if only he could focus, he'd be so smart. And uh, as I got older, this became, you know, kind of a problem, especially, you know, at, during college, I would always get work done right for the project, always one minute before it was sure many people hear that. And as I got older, especially after college ended, when I stopped having deadlines, I found myself sort of just nothing. It's very, very easy to coast by, not do anything when no one is assigning you deadline. And I am a blogger. I was a blogger. So at that point, as a blogger, uh, I, my goal was simply to write a couple articles a week, and I almost never hit that goal. So I started doing an experiment, ter- experiment log where I would have full kind of vote on stuff that I would do. And one of the projects I decided to do was try to become more productive, that is write more. And in my most famous experiment, I hired a girl off of Craigslist, follow me around. And every time I stopped writing, she would slap me in the face. I love this story. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I posted an article about how how it affected because in four days, I wrote as much as I usually do in about three or four months. And she only slapped me twice in higher uh, four days. It was sort of like having a friend next to me who would be kind of like, hey, Manish, come on, get back to work, get back to work, stop, stop, stop not writing, start writing, come on. So like the well-intentioned tough love as opposed to punishment. Yep. It's like pre and pre-commitment plus accountability. Always. So what happened though, is I wrote about how I wrote an article about how I, uh, I was so successful by at writing and I titled it why I hired a girl, why I hired a slapper to slap me in the face whenever I went on Facebook and how it quadrupled my productivity. Um, and I found out later on that uh, the word slapper, uh, prostitute, British English. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, apparently it was a great headline for the Daily Mail. So they wrote this article about about it and it went super viral. So for like three days, uh, three or four days, I was like famous. I was getting calls from NPR and from different television shows and yes, and it was amazing. And like three or four days later, I was like, wait, where the heck did everything go? Where's all the where's all the calls? And uh, I thought, hey, what if I wrote another blog post that was simple. so I decided, why don't I just make like a dog collar, a, a dog shot collar that, that zaps me every time I go on. That would be cool. uh, and so a friend of mine said, let's go to Radio Shack. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So we, we uh, he was smarter than I was with electronics. He, we ripped apart a dog collar. We hooked it up to a little Arduino electronics thing and made a video of me getting zapped every time I went on Facebook. And right 
before I was about to post that video, I thought to myself, this is actually really interesting. There are a million wearables out there that are tracking what I do. This one's actually changing what I do. And that became the idea for a company that I run now. Pavlock is a wearable device and a technology and coaching that help people change their habit form. It's, I have to say that when I shared this, my, when I finally got a block and, and put it on and started using it, I confess to the coaches in my yoga health coaching community that this is what I was doing. And there was a lot of sort of shock and like, uh, and <laughs> it, just, yeah, right. Like pun intended, <laughs> right? Yeah, there is, there is a lot of, of, uh, of people kind of, um, no, oh, what, you know, like, why are you doing this to yourself? Like this sort of like, uh, this, this misplaced empathy, I think, because mm-hmm. it, they, they weren't necessarily seeing it as, um, as a positive behavior change thing. They, they just saw it as, as punishment. Could you go into, uh, it, it, because obviously like, you know, with, um, as, as coaches want to, we want to be rooting people on and, and cheering for them and, and it's talking about that, you know, be interrupting a habit loop by making sure that we're rewarding the behaviors that we want. But, and I feel like I have so much self-discipline in terms of creating the habits that I want to create, but I didn't have a whole lot of self-discipline in breaking habits that I didn't want. And that those are actually two different muscles, so to speak, right? Uh, the, so fundamental. Yeah, yeah. So could you go into that a little bit? Like why, why we need both? Sure. Um, well, in general, I think, I think I'm disgusted by myself when I say I'm going to do something. Don't do it. I think I'm fundamentally disgusted by it. And I think that solving that problem is in the core of folk higher life. Uh, and so I think that there, like, ever since I grew up, I noticed that you always have these really weird solutions for problems that are just not rectangular. Like, you know, if you want to quit smoking, why not have someone just follow you around all day and every time you smoke, they smack it out of your hand. Now, that's kind of, there's going to be a bunch of reasons why that might not work, but why not start entertaining that 100% cess rate idea and then work backwards from there rather than starting at zero level and it's like, well, how can we approach this? Let's try to change the habit. Let's try to use drugs. Let's try to use uh, nicotine patches. Like, I, I get that they are helpful, but why not start at the craziest idea and then move backwards? Same thing. So, nice. So, so let's go most direct and then integrate what might actually work in real life. Yeah, I think a lot of people start off looking at the problems and don't really focus on the potential. And uh, and so anyway, getting to your real question about about bad habits, good habits. We started the company and I focused on the idea was that it would be a replacement my slap. It would know every time that I went on Facebook through a Chrome extension and it would send me a zap if I went on, on Facebook. And um, very, very quickly, or about a year later after I started the company, not that quick, I discovered this uh, research from the 19, uh, early 90s on what was called aversion therapy. And I started to review this stuff. And essentially, aversion therapy is a Pavlovian association to doing an action that quit. So if you think about if you ever were in college and had a friend who got really, really drunk and suddenly the day after you just like never, ever drank Ela again ever in your life uh, because you got so sick off that one drink one night. Or if you ever got sick at a restaurant, somehow you'd never want that for that dish more. Uh, aversion therapy <clears throat> is uh, the idea of creating that dish. And it's created by either nausea or electric shock. And as I started to look at search, I was aghast. Um, I found that the success rates, astronomical studies, essentially trying to quit smoking, cold turkey is about five cents at a six follow up. Nicky Patch, about 7.5 cents. And using five days of aversion therapy was above 50 cents. That's five days total for uh, less than an hour each day. And uh, six months later, two pack a day smokers, one pack a day smokers never had not smoked again. And those numbers were mind boggling, especially because the studies were already done and there was an FDA classification. So when I looked at that, I also looked at my product and said, holy crap, this works. Like our product already does. The old studies showed that it was all self-administered. There was no automation back. They barely had remote controls. So people would told by their doctor, okay, bring the cigarette to your mouth and press the button. Bring the cigarette to your mouth again and press the button. And what we started to do was replicate those studies with our users. And we found incredible success, not just for smoke, but for nail biting, for unhealthy eating, for sugar, mindless snack, for things like uh, scratching or hair pulling, for things like uh, negative thoughts, but for things like anxious uh, thoughts. And the one and the one that I had to use it for was getting over my ex-girlfriend. Um, the act of adding a zap changes basically most of your days spent in the back of your brain, the reptile basal ganglia. That's where habits store. Uh, the reptile brain likes moving towards things it likes, and it uh, moves away from, doesn't think about a lizard, it's on away from cold. That reptile brain is the most powerful part of it. The prefrontal cortex, which is the front of your human part of you, that part is where thought, and that part, think you, but less than half a day, than almost none of your day. And what I realized here is that a small zap knocks you out of automatic mode, brings you to the present, makes you aware, gives access to your prefrontal tech. And with that knowledge in mind, I, we were mind-boggled at, at the SS for how fast we were able to help stop. I 
think that's so, it's so interesting how it, we, you are able to, you're able to basically hack into the subconscious. You're, you're able to, mm-hmm. to get into these unconscious patterns that drive behavior without even knowing it. And, but with this, by creating really, it's, it's like a bodily aversion, right? Like you, if that, that tequila example, if you just never want to have that again, that's not a decision you make. It's not a vow. Like I will never get that drunk again. It's, it's more like your body knows that you're never going to have tequila again because it was so traumatized by the, by the negative exactly. experience. And, and so, so you, I just brought up two important points. Like one is that like, why not if we, if we are spending half of our day on autopilot, like, wouldn't it be cool to be able to tinker with machinery of that autopilot? Um, and so like the, the Pavlov kind of it does that as well as the, the self-administered aspect of it, because I know uh, that there are, um, it, it's the kind of thing that, that, it, well, it, that one of the things I was using it for was the subtle habit of uh, my inner critic of uh, that of uh, negative self talk, and it's the kind of thing where like yeah, Pavlov can't read my mind; it doesn't know when I'm having this negative self talk. But but if I can bring that mindful awareness to like okay, this is starting to happen, and I can zap myself present literally about it, then I don't have to go through that shame spiral or the behaviors that go with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and I think it really helped me. Like I, that within um, with I think within even just about a couple of weeks. Like, obviously, this is something I've been working on for a long time but just but since the pavlock i think i definitely noticed an uptick in um in or or maybe a downtick is the better way to describe it in terms of the prevalence of those of those thoughts like my brain didn't necessarily think it was safe territory anymore um it's so interesting (laughs) so like the negative thoughts thing mind-boggling because i couldn't believe when i started for negative thoughts that how fast they go away and like it's like start to think it and then your body's like no don't think that right and it just stops and it just divert. And it's a very interesting like lever. It's like a, a, like a lasso, you know, it's like a, a way to kind of, it's not about it zapping you. It's about you zapping bad parts of the brain. Or it's like you telling yourself, you're not in control. I'm in control. It's like pre- yeah. higher uh, humanity controlling animal instinct or like, or, or like, or like survival, right? I think about like the things that we think we need to do to keep ourselves safe, which includes beating ourselves up, right? Like that's a way that we keep ourselves safe. Like, oh, you can't do this or or you'll get kicked out of the tribe or somebody won't like you or yeah. some, you know, like, and those things aren't actually threatening to our survival. They're just threatening to our ego death, you know, or they're, they're, they're threatening the ego survival. And if we want to move beyond that and actually take risks and step into who we want to become our more full humanity, like mm-hmm. our full consciousness has to charge calling the shots. And so yeah. it's really cool to have like, to give that thing the talking stick, so to speak, you know, and, yeah. and to be like, no, I'm actually, I'm reclaiming dominance here. So yeah, that is just um, super cool. Test- Testing it on, mm-hmm. uh, there's a product called Muse, which is a, a G sensor. That right, like, the thing that gets strapped to your head to measure brain waves to help you go into different states of meditation. Yeah, exactly. And I've been testing it with meditation, first of all, and secondly, with um, just what happens when I do that. And what I've noticed is that the delta waves in my brain, which are uh, kind of your lack of focus waves, um, as soon, instantaneously, as soon as I, I am zapped, uh, you see a massive drop delta wave on the screen in live uh, biofeedback. And I was like, wow, that makes that, that was not a surprise. Right. It's like, but it's crazy because it, it persists for quite a bit of time, um, minutes, at, minutes, uh, tens of minutes. And um, I think that what it's, I think exactly what is happening is the reptile brain is getting shut up, prefrontal cortex getting aware. Yeah. I'm curious, like if there are people out there wondering if this is potentially hazardous or risky, is, are, are, are there actual risks to, to doing this? Um, I mean, I'm not going to recommend you do it if you, you know, you should ask your doctor if you're worried, but of course, mm-hmm. it's no, I mean, honestly, there's no risk because of way it's designed. It, uh, two inches of space, or less than two inches between the electrodes. So it crosses only on your wrist. It doesn't like go to body or go to heart. Mm-hmm. It goes just through a two inch space on the top level of skin and it's figurable. So you set the level. I like to compare it to like a rubber band snap. Yeah. Except it doesn't leave bloody welts. So. Exactly. Right. It's a step in the right direction from there. <laughs> That's something that makes me so intrigued about how people are like, don't do that to yourself or they think that it's like um, a bad, uh, unsafe product. And I'm like, how come you're okay with putting like drugs into your body that past liver and all of the rest of your circulatory system, but uh, a small, tiny rubber band snap on your wrist is not is not okay. That right. was very interesting to me, and I think a lot of it has to do with this weird association with word jock. It's mm-hmm. not about like you felt. It's not like it even hurt. It's almost like, a, like I an, laughed the first time I felt it. I was like, whoa! <laughs> it's more surprise, I think, than anything yeah. else. Which I guess kind of goes along with shock, right? It's a it's a you don't yeah. expect it, and there it is. And, exactly right. The word, and also when you start thinking about it, you're really going to notice that word shock. 
lot mm-hmm. in day to day, day to day conversation. And so I don't know. I think it's actually kind of fun. It's like interesting to me because it's not like because it's it's one of those ideas that like once you've used it, you're just like, dude, why is everybody not using it? Mm-hmm. And everybody doesn't want to use it for some reason that has nothing to the actual product, it has to do with mentality. Yes. So uh, for me, it's kind of fun because I know I'm fighting like an uphill battle about getting people to understand and get it. But what's really cool about it is I know I can write. And so <laughs> it's like as long know, as somebody actually is on board with changing their behavior, like so many, a lot of people are, are just kind of content with where, with where they're at and they're 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 comfortable there. But for people who are, are serious about a growth path, it can be an awesome leg up. Exactly. Yeah. And so getting um, uh, going into the talk about good habits. Versus, yeah. Um, I realized very early that the way to break bad habits actually fundamental. Uh, whenever you do a bad habit, well, first of all, build an aversion, and then whenever you do a bad habit, zap. So we started adding in like tracking. Now we have hand motion detection. Now we have integrations with if this then that. So if I walk into a McDonald's, then zap. If I have not stood up in long enough, then zap. Um, it can also, by the way, vibrate. Beat. So vibrations we started using as a positive reinforcer. Um, we've been using that as like uh, when you do a good job in the app, someone sends you good vibes, um, which is like a little nice vibration on your wrist. I have not spent enough time on the app, but that is cool. I love that community aspect. Yeah. And what was really, you have used the app though, right? Yeah, yeah. So what's really cool is uh, very early on, I realized that we needed to build a very good positive reinforcer. This was back in 2014. And I started thinking about how to do it. Uh, and I was getting into Bitcoin back then. And I was like, why don't we just create a cryptocurrency where you mine coin by doing healthy habit? Uh, and so we started to release a first version of it, the app. It's not a crypto, it's a digital points in the point. It's like a, you know, like, po- like Pokemon gold token. Yes. Um, but you basically earn Volt, they're called. You earn Volt for doing healthy habit. And we're utilizing that as our positive reinforcer. That puts vibration. Love it. In a culture that glorifies busyness, it's easy to overextend ourselves making the days longer by making the nights shorter, working through lunch, blowing off exercise, beating ourselves up for not meeting our own impossibly high standards. It can be really easy not to notice that comfort behaviors like numbing out with Netflix and a bag of chips have become regular substitutes for feeling connected to ourselves, loved ones, our intuition and creativity until you realize that you're not in the body that you want. You're not experiencing the joy that you want, but that you don't know quite how to break out of the cycle. It's time to put yourself at the top of your own to-do list and start embodying self-respect. What might that look like? You'd get enough rest. Eat, move, breathe, and connect in ways that honor your being, not just your doing. You'd set boundaries to have more time for what matters most. You'd feel less stressed, more calm, and confident. You'd feel lighter and more comfortable in your body. And leading by example, you'd help everyone around you do the same. That's how we roll in my Level Up group. See, I believe that you have the right to take care of yourself, even before all the work is done, and that when you do, you get more done in less time and are able to show up for the people that you love with kindness and patience. I'm looking for five people who are ready to start practicing self-respect this September in the next round of Level Up. It's hard to go against the grain of an entire culture by yourself and way easier in community. If you're ready to start honoring your being, visit the Level Up page at brodywelch.com and schedule a discovery call with me. If it's a good fit, I'll invite you to join this life-changing community. That's Brody with an I-E, Welch with a C-H, and hop on my calendar. Now back to the show. I'd love to know a little bit more about how you're integrating it with coaching, just because that is the, that's something that um, that is an area of interest for me, and something that I, that I'm always always looking for how how to bring bridge these these worlds of like how what we're working on um, individually, how uh, like how that can be shared, and how we can work together to progress. Sure, yeah. So uh, coaching is such a core part of our product because people's habit success is just massively enhanced when they have a coach or somebody who cares really. Um, and coaching is really interesting because like, you know, I hired a girl to slap in the face. Um, mm-hmm. It was just a random person I paid, you know, $8 an hour to. And uh, it worked. It didn't matter if it was the world's best coach or somebody I got off Craigslist. The act of having somebody who I was committing to do stuff with and then they were keeping me accountable changed the results astronomically. And so we started to build out a system for our uh, Pavlock users. We built three different, uh, we have three different coaches. We have a, a happiness coach 
coach, Natalie Susie. She teaches uh, at UC San Diego a class called The Pursuit of Happiness. And she helps people who are having trouble with uh, anxiety, negative thoughts, um, any kind of depression, get a hold of their behavior and help keep them, uh, help learn how to become happier. Um, we, have, we have a habit coach whose name is Lauren Doyle. She helps people who have tough habits, uh, help them stop or start habits, uh, like nail biting, smoking, uh, sugar, food, all that stuff. And then we have a business productivity coach who is my head of operations, um, Nicholas Rozier. And he helps, uh, it's actually quite simple, helping people who are trying to build their business. We found that people need to, people usually know what they need to do in their business, but they just don't do it. And so he makes sure that daily you're committing to things you're going to do tomorrow and that do them tomorrow. And through all of those three coaching programs, what we essentially have is a few phone calls every month and then daily accountability where you're able to be reminded via text and then via vibration and then via zap. If nice. So the coaches are able, the coaches are able to um, see your results and then send you stimuli via. Uh, yeah. So, so basically the people are getting, people are getting support. They're getting accountability. They are getting consequences if they don't do what they, what they say they're going to do, um, exactly. which, which is a, a pretty, pretty unique thing. Um, yeah. And, I don't and know why the yeah. world is so afraid of consequences. I know, right? It's not a, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> when I was in college and I was always trying to get myself to get work done and I would go to the library and then I would use Facebook all day until somehow the day before it's due, I magically always got it done minutes before the deadline. And as this happened to me, I'm looking at this over and over again. And what do I do? I feel like, a, I feel like terrible. I feel like a bad person. I feel like a imposter. And uh, I, I always, I'm like, all right, all I need to do is take my goal, break it down, and then uh, start working on the first part slowly, get to the next part, and it never worked. And I realized recently that it's not find yourself only when there's a deadline. The secret is not to change your entire personality. The secret is to add more deadlines. Add more deadlines, exactly. Right. And, and and that breaking it down into smaller steps may be an important part of being able to meet a deadline. Yeah. Uh, but it, yes, that, that idea of like, if you're somebody who's motivated by the deadline, why not continue to use that motivation? Uh, I think that that's the longest problem these days because people honestly don't have anything anymore. It's not like we have to run outside and find our food anymore. It's not like we're chasing down animals. It's like we have the world's biggest comfort of all time. It's the world's easiest life to be comfortable in and it's killing us. It's killing us how comfortable life. And so I think that like Pavlok is trying to bring a much needed lack of comfort and active discomfort into the world to help people be people. Like, you, don't, you don't grow without challenges. You don't grow unless there's a, a, a something that you do that's uncomfortable. Absolutely. Now, the one limitation that I really see with uh, with with Pavlok that I would love for your you and your engineer team can to solve for us is is that we can't change what we're not aware of right like we can't we can't actually look at our shadow issues uh, like we have to actually dredge those up ourselves with uh, mindfully in order to be able to to strategize about fixing it That's and true. so it's the kind of thing where like it's not necessarily but maybe if you get better with this muse thing we can we can biohack our way into awareness and then use the consequence thing to move uh, to move out to bridge that gap between our tension we end yeah. up doing. Well, what I noticed is that um, a lot of our negative thoughts uh, will like uh, uh, will start using the device and catch themselves earlier in the habit. Yes. Uh, so you probably noticed this yourself. I um, definitely did. I, yeah. It's and like it, you create awareness even just through manuals app. Um, well, I we have this one user who uh, she suffered from severe depression, and she told me that she had been suffering from it ever since she was high school. And so she started to, I asked her for the next five days, whenever you catch yourself in a negative thought loop, zap yourself, smile and text me where you are. And on the first day, she caught herself at work. On the second day, she caught herself on the way to work. And on the third day, she caught herself reaching for the front door. Fourth day, reaching for the front door. Fifth day, reaching for her front door. And I said, what's up with your front door? Hmm. There was a flower vase sitting next to her front door. And when she was 16, she and her twin sister had a birthday party. And a lot of people came, but nobody gave her a gift. They gave her sister a ton of gifts. And her sister said, oh, I'm so sorry. Here, have this flower vase. And that flower vase was triggering thoughts of nobody loves, nobody cares. And so I had her throw away that flower vase. And the next day, she didn't feel a negative thought till late, late. And she actually didn't feel it at all. She texted, I haven't felt good all day ever. And I find that a lot of negative thoughts, a lot of depression, I'm not going to say all by any means, saying a lot, is caused by physical items in the world that trigger subconsciously a negative thought loop. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, right. And, and thus keep us trapped in the past, like that probably like she doesn't need to continue going to that same terrain in her mind every day if she gets rid of the thing. Yeah, when I was using it to get over my ex-girlfriend, it took me about four or five days until I realized it, that it was the plate. She'd given me a set of plates in my house. And when I would make myself breakfast, I would eat on those plates and that the rest of the day I'd be thinking about her. And by getting rid of the plates,
states, I was able to stop thinking. That was interesting. It, it was, so uh, it's like a path, a period of time to find, to become aware. It takes a little bit of time to find that awareness, but it's there. I think that's that's um, that's a really cool bridge between the idea of like the 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 woo woo sort of idea of like you know needing to change the energy around you know like when you quit your job or when you lose a bunch of weight, you need to kind of create new energy around this new identity and like decluttering or like getting rid of the physical stuff in the house. It's like it it, it makes it it bridges the gap. It's like it's somehow less um, it's less of an abstraction and more of like a real thing that's triggering our subconscious. It's a it's an interesting explanation for why we go there. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> uh, so it sounds like this is this has had success uh, with with all kinds of things uh, for for a lot of people. I'd like to just I, I'm, I'm curious. You mentioned sleep earlier in our little pre chat, and I know that there is something called the shot clock. But can can you uh, can you talk a little bit about how how one might use um, use the padlock for sleep? Sure. Um, sleep is the most common habit that we sell, uh, and it's the most common habit that we help people with. Um, turns out that sleep is kind of the core habit of almost everything. Uh, running trains of thoughts. Uh, lack of like if someone doesn't sleep well, they don't get very much access to their prefrontal cortex. Most of their day is spent reptile. And uh, so sleep is such a core, and, and also they'll think that that's not true. They think they don't need it. Right. But, they, uh, but all studies have shown that their their quality of work goes down, their willpower goes down, happiness goes down. Um, not to mention like hunger and satiety levels being screwed up, the, the brain not being able to fully detoxify, uh, like basically like interfering with, with at the DNA level, what's going on. So yeah, like it's huge consequences for our health, our happiness, our intentions, and the people who think that they function best without it. It's like drunk driving, right? Like the, they, they don't, they don't know that they are that impaired. So yeah, huge, hugely important. And uh, so very early on, people started asking me for an alarm clock uh, that they could use with Pavlock. So I'm not, I'm an early riser naturally. And so I've never had trouble with leaps. So I never even really cared about or thought it would be very useful. Uh, but when we released the, we released an alarm and uh, we released a product called the shock clock. And what it was is essentially it tracks your sleep, um, just like a, a Fitbit might track your sleep cycles. And it would vibrate to wake you up gently in your lightest stage, um, which is very helpful. And that for many people, that was all they wanted, just being able to wake up or have a silent alarm so that they didn't disturb their partner. Um, but for many heavy sleepers, uh, we found they, they really wanted to wake up. And so what we built is it vibrates to wake you up in your lightest stage of sleep. You have about a minute to get out of bed and do jumping jacks. And if you don't, you'll receive zap. And people simply wake up to shock, simply wake up to shock. There's no ifs or ands or buts about it. Um, almost nobody can sleep through that zap. Yeah, that makes people, sense. Right. <laughs> and so for people who just need to wake up, uh, we found that it's like a, almost a lifesaver for many people. Um, lots of people who are having trouble with their 4 a.m. jobs, who were are in the military, who are um, narcoleptic or have sleep disorders, they use our product in order to help them get the ability to just be awake. So uh, we are just about to launch our second version of Pavlock, of the Shock Clock. It's called the Shock Clock 2. By the time this airs, it should be shipped. And um, the Shock Clock 2 essentially takes the idea of helping people wake up early. And we add some cool gamification and fun, um, basically uh, some cool new ways of going into, uh, you got to do math problems to wake up, or you have to go into your kitchen and scan a QR code to wake up. But then it's also hooked up with, um, you know, you set up your own consequence. But if you don't wake up, it can post on Facebook and let your friends zap you. And uh, also, if you, we realize that a big problem is helping people get to bed on time. So we started doing a, um, a betting system. Yeah, that was definitely my next question is like, what, what if the problem is that you're not getting enough sleep because you're blowing off bedtime? So yeah, tell, tell me more. Yeah. So uh, the basic stuff we're doing is step one is we have a betting pool. So you say, I will be in bed and not leave by this time, 10 o'clock. And if you do, you you put down what we call volts, uh, basically worth some sort of cash. And you put down money and you say, I will be in bed on this time. And if you are, you win back your bet plus the volts from the people who failed. So you have a little betting pool of uh, people who are attempting to do the same habit. Um, I tried that exact thing with my coaching program uh, uh, during during our first, everybody sets their own habit for the week. Mm -hmm. And yes, that exact thing. Of that, it's very aligned. Uh, yeah, that there's, there's a consequence. Um, well, it's a, there's a, I think, I think uh, I'll have more data, <laughs> more data in a little while. So I don't think sure. that, uh, that I necessarily structured it very well. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I think the premise is sound and we'll be doing it again. Yeah. The, and um, the, we're working on a, a second thing, which I've noticed yeah, yeah. that for myself, um, I simply am on my computer or using my phone when I am not sleeping. And so I hooked up for myself a little um, router control, basically a power plug that just turned off my electricity every time at like 9 p.m. And when it's dark in your room and there's no computer or laptop uh, or 
your phone, you kind of just go to, the, go to bed. Um, and so we're working on developing this into the, the shot clocks. Essentially, software on your computer and phone will just block access to it after X o'clock. And that way, a lot of the distractions go away. Yeah, it, plus the melatonin disrupting um, mm-hmm. <laughs> the yeah. phone itself. That, yeah. that's, that's it's awesome. like, why can't I go to bed? People ask while they hold a beaming satellite light in front yeah. of their face to... <laughs> right, I wonder what might be contributing to this issue. Yeah. The other thing is people don't people forget that we're not machines and we don't just turn off at night, that we actually do need to wind down and mm-hmm. allow our nervous systems to go from sympathetic to parasympathetic to and and that this this takes time. And that so it's a couple things that can help with with sleep actually happen during the day. And there are things that we could be things like meditation um, helps with deeper sleep. Exercise in the morning can help with deeper mm-hmm. sleep as well as sleeping longer. And of course, then like something like self-massage or an Epsom salt bath um, in the evenings that can actually uh, just help the nervous system relax, let go, help the body get ready. Doing some using essential oils. There's like pretty simple things that are that are inexpensive and that we could all be incorporating into our lives. But in order to trigger that wind down routine, it's it's like so helpful to have something like your phone alarm going off or like it, th- there's ways that technology can help us actually do these things to not be machine like in our expectations of ourselves and to be able to set ourselves up for some good sound sleep at night. Definitely. I think so. Our goal is to is to help people achieve any goal that they, they want. Um, and I think breaking them down, we found that most people simply need the same few habits. There's there's not really, like, if you take everybody in the world who is uh, sick, has uh, is obese, it has depression or anxiety, and you made all of them sleep eight hours a night and drink glasses of water and meditate once a day and eat fairly healthy and exercise, like, I think most of the disorders that we have would go away. That's and the whole reason that I'm focusing on coaching as opposed to treating people in my acupuncture clinic is that so it's like the answers are the same. And so it's really like, and, and, and so why not work together on this? Like no matter what problems we're having, like the solutions are, uh, that's like one of the core tenets of Chinese medicine is right. Like one cause a thousand diseases. Exactly. And, and, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then modern medicine focuses on treating the symptoms. Uh, last mm-hmm. night I went to a, uh, it was like a genomics event in Boston and it was a bunch of people who focus on gene therapy talking about the future of medicine and I was getting so riled up because it's like they're talking about how now we've sequenced genes now we have amazing results in identifying likely to get a disease like we've doubled our success rate on prediction 5% 10% we're going to save so many lives and I'm like are you die up dude have them not food exactly right oh, right have them have them get, get rid of the refined sugar in their diets will be will be a hundred percent. And then every time, and I think uh, every time I talk to doctors like uh, who are heavy into the pharma industry, like they laugh it off. Like behavior is a foregone conclusion. Mm-hmm. Like obviously, well, <laughs> yeah, it would be amazing if the patients did that. Yeah, but I think that more education should be the answer. And meanwhile, the number one smoking profession, doctors, and the number one suicidal profession, doctors and dentists. Right, right. Come on. Well, and it doesn't help that the system is stacked against us in terms of that. What what our government chooses to subsidize is to make things like sugar, uh, you know, artificially um, inexpensive and, and to make real food um, really expensive. And so people blame themselves for these problems that we we really need to be addressing, I think, as at, a, at the level of, of society and like, what are, what are we funding? What are, what are we really investing in? Is it health or disease? And really our, our, our current disease care system is, is you know, or, or cancer for that matter. It's like, let's look at the toxins we're putting out there as opposed to blaming people for not thinking happy thoughts or for, you know, not doing enough on their own. Oh, Manish, this has been a super fun conversation. I know you're a busy guy, so I will let you get on with your day. But I just, um, if people want to connect with you or get a Pavlock, uh, where would you suggest they go? Uh, I'd recommend you go to uh, pavlock.com forward slash habit quiz. Uh, that's a quiz where uh, it connects you to our coaching program as well. But the habit quiz lets us, uh, basically, you'll answer some questions about the habits that you have and we'll get profile and get out about how you can change your behavior the most. Um, so pavlock.com slash habit quiz is the best place to go first. And from there, you're able to uh, check out the website and buy a product you want. Um, and secondly, you may want to just download the app on your phone, the App Store or the Play Store. P-A-V-L-O-K. Manish Sethi, thank you so much for such a fun conversation. I really appreciate your time. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. This episode is brought to you by my Inner Alchemy Retreat. Hey, what you doing next February? How about you and me and 20 others escape the dark, wet winter 
and go hang out on a quiet beach in Mexico for a whole week. I'm thinking a world-class retreat center with a five-star restaurant serving us delicious prana-rich meals, luxury oceanfront bungalows, qigong on the beach. We could do some breathing and moving and some yoga, maybe some snorkeling and surfing, take a long walk at sunset. We'll pulsate between some deep relaxation and deep inquiry work, looking at ourselves through an elemental lens, how wood, fire, earth, metal, and water are at play in our lives, and grounding these concepts in our bodies. You'll emerge feeling renewed with an armload of new self-care tools and a jump start on who you're becoming in 2019. I've been leading transformational retreats since 2012, and they are powerful in addition to being a total blast. But don't take my word for it. Head over to the Mexico retreat page at brodywelch.com. That's Brody with an IE and Welch with a CH. And read what past retreat peeps have said. Then sign up. You know you want to, and you deserve it. When you claim your spot by August 1st with the promo code PODCAST, you'll receive a free downloadable copy of my most popular meditations, Advice from Your Future Self, The Healthy Eating Meditation, and The Breathing Bundle. So head to BrodyWelch.com right now and check it out. Thanks for listening today. For more episodes of A Healthy Curiosity, you can visit the iTunes store. If you appreciated today's show, please leave us a review. This helps other people to find the podcast. You could also head to BrodyWelch.com where you can find free self-care resources, learn more about Chinese medicine, and let me know what you'd like to hear about on future episodes. I'd love to hear from you. Till next time, be good to yourself.